Hello Vital Sign. Today we're going to talk about a graph operation called the Michelsky of a graph and why it's so interesting. The Michelsky graph of an undirected simple graph G with vertices VI is itself an undirected simple graph that contains graph G as a subgraph along with the vertex UI for each corresponding vertex VI in graph G and one additional vertex W. We're not done yet though. Now we have to connect the rest of the vertices according to the following rules of the Michelsky construction. As stated previously, there is a copy of graph G in the Michelsky graph of G. So all of the edges from graph G are present between the V vertices in the Michelsky graph of G. However, there are also new edges formed in the Michelsky graph according to this rule. For each edge VI, VJ in graph G, there are edges UI, VJ and UJ, VI in the Michelsky graph of G. In this example, the edge V1, V2 in G produces edges U1, V2 and U2, V1 in the Michelsky graph of G. The edge V2, V3 in graph G produces edges U3, V2 and U2, V3 in the Michelsky graph of G. The edge V3, V4 in G produces edges U4, V3 and U3, V4 in the Michelsky graph of G. The edge V4, V5 in graph G produces edges U5, V4 and U4, V5 in the Michelsky graph of G. And finally, the edge V5, V1 produces edges U5, V1 and U1, V5 in the Michelsky graph of G. Note that the vertex U1 is connected to the same V vertices in the Michelsky graph as V1, that is vertices V2 and V5. And the vertex U2 connects to the same V vertices as vertex V2, that is vertices V1 and V3. This is another way of defining the connections between the U and V vertices in a Michelsky graph. The vertex UI corresponding to a vertex VI connects to the same V vertices as that vertex VI. This will be important later in the video. The final step in determining the connections in a Michelsky graph of G is to connect the vertex W to all of the U vertices. There we go. This is the Michelsky graph of the graph on the left. Notice that there are no edges between the U vertices. To summarize, here are the rules for finding the Michelsky of a graph. First, list out the vertices of your original graph G, labeling them V1, V2, V3, and so on, and then include these vertices in your Michelsky graph. Then for each V vertex, include a U vertex. And finally, add the W vertex. Then connect the V vertices according to their connections in graph G forming a copy of graph G among the V vertices in the Michelsky graph of G. Next, connect the W vertex to each U vertex. And finally, for each edge VI, VJ in graph G, draw an edge UI, VJ and an edge UJ, VI in the Michelsky graph of G. Note, these rules mean that if a graph G has N vertices and M edges, its Michelsky graph will have 3m plus n edges and 2n plus 1 vertices. Feel free to pause the video and work out why this is true for yourself. So you might be wondering, why is the Michelsky construction so important? It's important because it allows us to prove a powerful result, that there exist triangle-free graphs, that is graphs without a 3-click, of arbitrarily high chromatic number. Now let's think about that result first, as it is not at all obvious. If you start with a triangle-free graph, and you increase the size of the largest click in that graph in order to increase its chromatic number, very soon the graph would not be triangle-free, as any click on three or more vertices contains a triangle, and you would need a three click or higher to bump your graph's chromatic number up and over three. So how in the world can we make the chromatic number of a graph arbitrarily high without somehow introducing a triangle or three click? That is the genius of the Michelsky construction. Let's see why this construction lets us prove this result. First, we'll need two smaller results. One, that the Michelskyan 
only creates new triangles, that is, triangles that were not in the original graph, if the original graph had triangles of its own. And two, that the chromatic number of a Michelsky graph is one greater than that of its original graph. These two results would allow us to start with a triangle-free graph of some chromatic number k and then apply the Michelskyan over and over, increasing the chromatic number of the graph by one with each application while creating no triangles. Let's take a look at the first result. Think about the definition of a three-click or triangle. It is defined as three vertices that are mutually connected. Now think about the adjacency rules for a Michelski graph. There are really three types of edges in a Michelski graph. Those between U's and V's, those between V's and V's, and those between W's and U's. Could the edges between W's and U's be a part of a triangle? No, because no U's are connected to each other. So there can be no triangles formed with the edges between vertex W and the U vertices. Now think about the edges between V vertices and V vertices. The V vertices and the edges between them constitute a copy of the original graph G. So the only triangle between V vertices are those that already existed in the original graph G. If there were no triangles in the original graph, as in this case, then there are no triangles between V vertices and V vertices in the Michelski graph. And finally, consider the edges between U vertices and V vertices. Remember that a three-click, or triangle, requires that all three vertices be mutually connected. That would be impossible if two of them were U vertices, because U vertices are necessarily not connected. So the only possibility for new triangles would be those with two V vertices and one U vertex. Think back to our rule now for adjacencies in a Michelski graph. For each edge VI, VJ in graph G, there is an edge UI, VJ and an edge UJ, VI in the Michelski graph of G. This means that the vertex UI in the Michelski graph cannot connect to both VI and VJ in the Michelski graph because UI is not connected to VI. So we would need some other vertex, UK, that could connect to both VI and VJ. And of course, VI and VJ would have to be connected vertices in the original graph G. Now what would this imply? According to our rules, it would imply that both VI and VJ connect to another vertex, VK, in the original graph G, so that the edge VIVK would create the edge UKVI in the Michelski graph, and the edge VJVK would create the edge UKVJ in the Michelski graph. But hang on, that means there's a triangle VIVJ VK in the original graph. In other words, the only new triangles that can be created through the Michelskian, that is, triangles that are not merely copied from the original graph, are those of the form VIVJ UK. And that the only way these new triangles can be created is if there is a triangle VI, VJ, VK in the original graph. So if you start with a triangle-free graph, the repeated application of the Michelskian will never give you a new triangle. Now for the second result. The Michelski graph of a graph G with chromatic number K has chromatic number K plus 1. Think about it this way. There is a copy of the original graph in the Michelski graph. So we know right away that the chromatic number of the Michelski graph has to be at least the chromatic number of its original graph. In this example, we needed three colors to properly color the original graph, so we'll need three colors to properly color the copy of the original graph in the Michelskian. Moving on, notice that vertex W is connected to all of the U vertices. This means that if the U vertices can be properly colored with K colors, the vertex W must be colored with a completely different color, as it is connected to all of those U vertices, meaning that the entire Michelski graph can be properly colored with K plus 1 colors. Note that while the U vertices are not connected to each other, we can't just color them all the same color, because they are in fact connected to the V vertices. So the colors we apply to the V vertices determine how we color the U vertices and we used K colors to properly color the V vertices. 
It's not too much of a problem though. We can use the very same K colors we used on the V vertices on the U vertices. Each vertex UI corresponding to the vertex VI will be connected to all of the V vertices that VI is connected to. We assume that we already properly colored the V vertices with K colors. So by definition of a proper coloring, VI does not have the same color as any of its adjacent V vertices. And since UI is not connected to VI, we could give UI the same color as VI and UI will not have the same color as any of its adjacent V vertices either. For example, U1 is not connected to V1 and is connected to the same V vertices as V1, that is V2 and V5. So we can color U1 the same color as V1 and repeat this for each U vertex. In other words, if you have a proper coloring function, C of VI, that assigns a color to each V vertex, then there is also a proper coloring function equal to C of VI that assigns a color to each U vertex. Remembering that the W vertex is connected to each U vertex and so requires a totally different color, then since we can color the U and V vertices in at most K colors, we can properly color the entire Michelsky graph, including the W vertex, in at most K plus 1 colors. What remains now is to prove that we cannot properly color the Michelsky graph in any less than K plus 1 colors. One way to prove this is to assume that the U vertices could be properly colored with less than the K colors used on the V vertices, and then show that this creates a contradiction. For instance, if we could properly color the U vertices with just K minus 1 colors, then the unique color used for the W vertex would give us K colors for the Michelsky graph instead of K plus 1. This is not possible, however, as we'll see in a minute. If we could properly color the U vertices in less than K colors, it implies that we could also properly color the V vertices in less than K colors. Here's why. Assume that the chromatic number of the original graph is K, and that we've properly colored the V vertices in the Michelskian with K colors, and the U vertices with K minus 1 colors. Now turn your attention to the V vertices. For every V vertex colored with the kth color, we could color it instead with the color used for its corresponding U vertex. Why? Because as we said before, UI shares the exact same V neighbors as VI. And as assumed, we colored the U vertices with K minus 1 colors, such that none of the U vertices had the same color as their adjacent V vertices. Therefore, whatever color we used for UI, which must have been one of the K-1 colors we used for the U vertices, could be applied to the vertex VI with the kth color, and we would still have a proper coloring of the V vertices. And then for every V vertex with one of the earlier colors, we'll just leave them the same. We found a proper coloring for the V vertices with just K-1 colors. But that is a contradiction. The chromatic number of graph G was K, Therefore, we cannot possibly properly color the V vertices with less than K unique colors. Summarizing, we found that the U vertices can't be properly colored with less than K colors, and they can be colored with exactly K colors, so the chromatic number of the Michelskian must be K plus 1. The Michelskian construction adds exactly 1 to the chromatic number of its original graph. The beauty of this is that we can start with a triangle-free graph, say the singleton graph, and then apply the Michelskian construction over and over, giving us new triangle-free graphs with arbitrarily high chromatic number. In fact, the sequence of graphs you get by starting with the singleton graph and applying the Michelskian over and over is called the Michelski graphs. That's all for this video. In my next video, we'll take a look at some other graph operations like the power of a graph, the complement of a graph, and the lexicographic product of two graphs. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment. Have a great day.